There is no doubt about it. Wrestling is a tough business to crack. There's a lot of talented athletes out there and not many places at the top of the table. You've probably got more chance of becoming a successful film or television star than getting a job in WWE or AEW. But for those lucky few that make it in the industry, there's millions of dollars to be made. And if they play their cards right, they might get out with their health intact. And yet the wrestling business is littered with broken people. Not just physically and mentally broken people, but also financially broken people. In this video, we're going to take a look at exactly how 10 WWE wrestlers went from being superstars to scraping the bottom of the barrel. Before we start today's video, if you like this kind of content, a thumbs up and a subscribe would be much appreciated. In the mid-90s, Sunny shone bright as the original WWF diva. She was beautiful and charismatic, and she totally eclipsed the male superstars that she was managing. In 1996, Sunny became more than just a valet, as her on-screen responsibility started to grow. She became a host and an interviewer on WWF TV, and even an occasional commentator. As Sonny's influence grew in the WWF though, so did the backstage issues that she was surrounding herself with. Relationships with colleagues became strained and trust with the management began to slide. She started to develop a drink and drugs problem along with her promiscuity and all of this started to overshadow her work and before long her responsibilities in the company were diminished. Eventually, Sonny was released from the WWF and it was a downward spiral from there. She grappled with a series of personal setbacks from multiple arrests to struggles with addiction. In the 2000s, Sonny's financial situation took a nosedive, leading to her working in the adult entertainment industry as a means to make ends meet. WWE did fund her time in rehab but it doesn't seem to have worked. She also got into the habit of repeatedly driving under the influence and that would end up causing a tragedy. In March 2022, an intoxicated Sonny was driving with a suspended license when she caused a fatal three-car collision that led to the death of an elderly man. She entered a plea of no contest to the charges in August 2023 and now she's awaiting sentencing with the prospect of up to 25 and a half years behind bars. Perry Saturn had an incredible career during the late 90s and early 2000s. He was one of those lucky superstars who performed in ECW, WCW and the WWF and fans will fondly remember him rubbing shoulders with Eddie Guerrero, Chris Benoit and Dean Malenko in The Radicals. Oh, and who can forget Moppy? Of course, never forget Moppy. But after his in-ring career died down, Saturn's life took a downturn that nobody could have ever anticipated. It emerged that he'd not only gone broke, but he'd also been homeless for over two years. In a terrible twist of fate, Saturn's financial downfall came about after a heroic event. He intervened during a rape attempt where a man was attacking a woman in a back alley and he was shot multiple times by the perpetrator. While he potentially saved that woman's life, he ended up with mounting medical bills and subsequently an addiction to drugs as he tried to cope with the pain and the trauma of the event. The costs that Saturn incurred were both emotional and financial. As Saturn later opened up about his life challenges, another revelation came about. He was suffering from a traumatic brain injury, possibly from the numerous concussions that he suffered in the ring. Thank goodness then that he's back on his feet today and living with his partner, but it goes to prove that nothing is certain after leaving the wrestling business. The Dynamite Kid, Tom Billington wowed fans in the late 80s alongside Davy Boy Smith. The British Bulldogs worked a style that combined British, North American and Japanese wrestling. 
and it was spectacular. Davy Boy brought the power moves to the tag team while Billington flew across the ring in his unique high risk way. But one fateful night in 1988 would change Billington's life forever. He received a back injury during a match which required two discs to be removed. The doctors told him to stop wrestling immediately if he wanted any quality of life, but he didn't listen. Like so many wrestlers, Billington couldn't let the wrestling business go. And so he continued to work for a number of years despite being in incredible pain. He already had a reputation for having a bad temper and being a bully, but the back injury turned him into a monster. Eventually, Billington alienated everyone in his life, including his tag team partner Davy Boy, who ended up abandoning him in the early 90s to forge a singles career. Billington's violent temper led his wife to divorce him in 1991 and he became confined to a wheelchair, ending his wrestling career once and for all. He was now destitute from the divorce and unable to earn any more money and so he moved back to England where he became a recluse. He would end up dying in his council house at the age of 60 with barely a penny to his name. Before stepping into the wrestling ring, Nicole Bass was a prominent bodybuilder. Bass made her wrestling debut in ECW before moving on to the WWF in the late 90s. She subsequently lodged a sexual harassment lawsuit against them. She alleged an incident of sexual assault behind the scenes, which ended in a court battle that saw Vince McMahon and Triple H both take the stand. The court decided against Bass, leaving her in financial peril. A few years later, she was hospitalised with steroid-influenced pancreatitis, and now, with the court fees and medical bills piling up, she became financially destitute. Bass passed away in February 2017 after suffering a heart attack. Marty Gennetti was one half, of the Rockers with Shawn Michaels in the late 80s and early 90s. They were as wild in the ring as they were backstage, with both men quickly becoming infamous for their hard partying ways. They truly lived the rock and roll lifestyle. That lifestyle would lead to both men developing serious substance abuse issues later on down the line. In December 1990, Michaels and Ginetti squared off against the genius and the lesser-known Chuck Austin. A few minutes into the match, Ginetti executed his signature move, the Rocker Dropper, on Austin. But the move went wrong, leaving Austin with severe injuries, including a fractured neck that left him partially paralysed. In 1994, Austin filed a lawsuit against both the WWF and Marty Jannetty. Initially, the court ruled in favour of Austin, granting him a whopping $26.7 million in damages. However, after an appeal, the WWF reached an out-of-court settlement with Austin, reducing the amount to $10 million. Jannetty would get his first taste of financial peril having to contribute half a million dollars to the settlement. And while Michaels would go on to become one of the most renowned wrestlers of all time, Gennetti would be the one left at the side of the road. His singles career never captured the same magic as his time as a rocker. As Gennetti's in-ring career started to wind down, he was left with all of those substance abuse issues to deal with. It's safe to say that Ginetti and Michaels had very different lives after splitting up, with Michaels becoming the WWF champion and Ginetti essentially going flat broke. Ginetti did many shoot interviews and personal appearances to make ends meet, but an ankle injury almost finished him off financially in 2019. The image of Jimmy Snooker jumping from the top of the cage in 1983 is iconic. Wrestling fans had never seen anything like it before and it helped Snooker ascend to legendary status in the business. However, the same year that he jumped off the top of that cage in Madison Square Garden, Snooker's 23-year-old girlfriend was found unconscious in his hotel room bed. 
The official investigation at the time ruled that the death was accidental and Snooker continued his wrestling career with the WWF. The family of the deceased woman secured a victory in a wrongful death lawsuit against Snooker and he was ordered to pay half a million dollars. However, financial troubles plagued Snooker at the time and so he never paid the family and as a result, he filed for bankruptcy and he essentially got away from the situation totally scot-free. He went on to have a fruitful career that culminated in him being inducted into the WWF Hall of Fame in 1996. In 2013, a local newspaper investigated the death and found that it should have been prosecuted as a homicide rather than accidental. Snooker was now back in the spotlight as a murderer. He was charged with third-degree murder and involuntary manslaughter, but by now, Snooker was riddled with cancer and the murder case was dropped due to him being unfit to stand. He would slip away into death in 2017 without ever having to face the court. At the end of last year, I made this video covering another 12 wrestlers who also went flat broke. I'll leave a link to that video in the description if you'd like to give it a watch. In recent years, poor old Virgil has become something of a meme, largely thanks to this photo. That image is both hilarious and tragic at the same time. So many wrestlers turn to the convention circuit once they've become too old to perform, and for Virgil, it's a vital form of income. So to see him without a line in front of his signing table is very sad to see. Virgil debuted for the WWF in 1987 and it's somewhat ironic that he was the lackey for the million dollar man, Ted DiBiase. His big break came during the golden era of the WWF where thanks to Hulkamania, everyone was making big money. When he signed with WCW in 1996, he earned at least $100,000 per year for four years, despite hardly ever actually wrestling. Since retiring from active competition, Virgil has hit hard times. In fact, he's become more famous in recent years for his grifting ways. Perhaps the Million Dollar Man should sit down with Virgil and teach him a lesson in financial planning. WWF fans who were watching during the 90s will remember Luna Vachon vividly. She was utterly terrifying as the manager to Bam Bam Bigelow and later to Goldust. With her screeching voice, wild hair and intense makeup, Luna became an instantly recognisable female in the Federation. Vachon was actually from a proud wrestling family and had wanted to carry on the family tradition from a very young age. Being in the WWF was a dream come true for her, but it would end in animosity. Vachon's on-screen rivalry with Sable translated into genuine pain behind the scenes. There were disagreements over how their storyline and matches were to be handled, and tensions peaked during their feud. Vachon ended up fighting with other backstage staff too. That led the WWF to release her in early 2000. She had various personal problems including suffering from bipolar disorder and substance abuse issues. Around Christmas 2009, a massive house fire took all of her personal and valuable belongings. That included all of the wrestling memorabilia that she'd collected during her career. A few months later, in August 2010, Vashon was found dead by her mom at her home in Pasco County, Florida. She was just 48 years old and she died of an overdose. Before breaking into wrestling, Tony Atlas was nicknamed Mr. USA after his impressive wins in bodybuilding. His superhuman physique was sculpted from pure power and athleticism. In the mid-1970s, he became a pro wrestler and the fans loved him. When he partnered with Rocky Johnson, they made history by becoming the first ever African-American tag team to win the WWF Tag Team Championship. But as his in-ring career started to fade, his real life 
hit the skids. Atlas became addicted to drugs and relationship problems left him financially drained. This series of misfortunes led him to a point where he was homeless, often sleeping under a park bench. Monica, the woman that would later become his wife, found Atlas sleeping underneath a park bench and she would play a pivotal role in his recovery. With her support, Atlas gradually managed to rebuild his life and went on to be inducted into the Hall of Fame in 2006. Scott Hall was one of the most charismatic and important wrestlers in history. Whether he was portraying Razor Ramon in the WWF or as one of the founding members of the NWO in WCW, Hall made significant money during the 90s and he lived the high life. But he was never a well man. The world of pro wrestling allowed him to escape from his massive anxiety problems for a few hours and the rest of the time he lost himself to drink and drugs. When his in-ring career began to wind down, his substance abuse issues fully consumed him, leading him to significant financial problems. By the 2010s, Hall's financial situation had deteriorated considerably. Though he'd made a fortune during his wrestling years, a combination of personal issues, medical bills and other expenses took most of his money. He needed a hip replacement surgery and dental work, but he couldn't afford to pay for them. In response, Diamond Dallas Page stepped in to help. DDP launched a GoFundMe campaign to raise money for Hall's essential medical procedures. The campaign was a huge success with wrestling fans around the world coming together to help one of their fallen heroes. Thanks to the help of DDP and the fans, Hall lived out his last remaining years clean and sober with a new lease on life. <laughs>